So welcome to the digital version of the Alembic. Uh, the Alembic is a physical practice space in Berkeley, and we also run um, some things like this uh, online. And um, we are a practice space that's organized around meditation and movement, neuroscience and psychedelics with a thread of creativity running through the whole thing. Uh, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, so all your donations are tax deductible, and um, all of the meditation events that we run are run by donations so that they're accessible to everyone. Uh, so for those of you who are local to the Bay Area, stop by sometime and uh, do a sit with us. And um, if you're not, you can catch um, many of our meditation events live streaming and archived to our YouTube channel, which is just The Alembic, so youtube.com slash The Alembic. And you can find out more about what's going on with us by going to our website, which is berkeleyalembic.org. Okay, Kelly, over to you. Yeah, thanks so much. So um, this evening, I'm excited to teach a yoga nidra practice. So I'll do a little bit of teaching and then we'll go into the practice. And typically what happens is people turn their cameras off and find a comfortable position where you can lie down in a supported um with your head supported and maybe a bolster underneath your knees, or you can be just flat on the floor or a mat um, or a couch. And the idea is that it's a, a guided meditation while you're in the Shavasana or lying down position. So the practice, if you are to fall asleep, is absolutely part of what Yoga Nidart considers, you know, um, what's what's right and so if you fall asleep there's absolutely nothing wrong with it and often people can experience some profound things in this sort of in between waking and sleeping um sort of uh states that arise and also if you don't sleep at all just feel free to follow along let the guidance of my voice be there and then do your own inquiry so if there's ever anything that i'm suggesting that's just not what you're interested in practicing, then I would suggest that you follow your own inquiry during that time period and then see, you know, if after I finish that section, if you'd like to come back to the guidance. So it's that open because we want this practice to feel like it's your own instead of an imposed uh, practice that you have to follow. Um, that said, feel free to follow the entire thing. <laughs> and um, and I wanted to talk a little bit this evening about the balance of opposites. And we use opposites a lot in Yoga Nidra. Um, it can often be used for the psychological content to work with what's happening in your life. But also in the Yoga Nidra practice, we use the most essential opposites as a way of inquiring into who we are and who we aren't. And I was thinking about this documentary. I can't remember what it was. I watched it several years ago. It was um, a, a shot of the Dalai Lama going up to someone in India, um, was a yogi, maybe a Hindu priest. I'm not sure who it was. And he, he sort of said, you say self, we say no self, same thing. And then he just like kind of slapped him on the back and started laughing. <laughs> and, um, so I think for me, that is such a good way to describe uh, a lot of what this, um, this practice is at the intersection of where some of the Buddhist teachings meet some of the yoga teachings, that um, as we're inquiring into who we are, most essentially, you know, we discover who we're not and also the nature of our mind. And you could say, um, a lot of the Buddhist teachings would focus on the emptiness side of that. And just looking at, um, if you look at a belief or a thought or an emotion, you see the inherent transience and emptiness, etc. cetera. Um, and then also, if you go too far on that side, it starts to feel there's this, there's this thing called like being stuck in emptiness, basically, where you can just be so, uh, empty in terms of like seeing each thought as empty and in the deep practice of emptiness that that there's a missing of like the fullness and the luminosity and the presence and the radiance that that also um, can be experienced when you're hitting those essential 
um, inquiries around your true nature and who you are and who you aren't. So I love the practice of yoga nidra for this because it lets us inquire at the level of the body into the nature of emptiness and fullness, spaciousness and kind of the luminosity side. And so one of the neat things about the practice too is that along the way, so we'll start with an intention and, and go through this uh, body scan, breathing, meeting emotions, thoughts, and then more subtle inquiries into the nature of who we are and aren't. And um, one of the things that we can do all throughout the practice is work with opposites. And we're kind of setting ourselves up when we do that in order to feel the balance of emptiness and fullness. Um, so this helps us kind of not lean too far from one side to the other. I just loved the, the way that the Dalai Lama said that, the self and no self, and um, it's a beautiful description. So I'm um, throwing a lot of words out there and I think we each will have our own experience of it. So when we get into the practice, um, you'll be bringing your own background and your own study and practice of meditation to this moment. So let your experience happen through the lens of that, but also the invitation here is to just inquire into the felt sense as we're in the meditation practice of some of these really key important kind of insights of meditation, the deeper ones, um, deeper meaning more essential. Um, hi, Mary Jean, welcome. Um, and, and so let me see if I notice anything else here. So what I wanted to do then in the practice is I'm going to do, a, this goes back to sort of the origins, some of the origins of the yoga nidra practice where I would just mention one thing like happiness and then another thing like sadness. And the idea is that you'll do as you do in any meditation practice, you'll feel happiness as it feels in your body, sadness as it feels in your body. But when you're surfing between opposites, it helps you kind of, it loosens the grip of the um, aversion and attraction to it. You know, it's just, can we just be with and rest in this witnessing awareness as we see the different opposites co-arising um, or we go back and forth between two. And there's something powerful that can happen um, when you're in a restful state and you're just experiencing the comings and goings. So when we get to that section of emotions and thoughts, I'm going to suggest some opposites. So normally when I teach, I would ask you what's present for you emotionally. And then we would look at what the opposite would be and then hold both. But in this tonight, I'm going to actually, you know, give you some opposites to consider. And they'll come a little quicker than than normal. So I might just say one and you'll you'll feel the impression of sadness in your body. And then I might say contentment and you feel the impression of contentment in your body. And then we keep going one after the other. And this the intent of that is to be able to feel yourself as this this welcoming presence to all that's coming and going and to feel that basic thing that these states come and go and you can welcome them as they do you'll have preferences for one over the other but it just sort of lets you lean right back into the witnessing awareness of what's coming and going um and then, you know, I'd like to experiment a little bit with meditating on, on, I, I really like how Adya Shanti calls emptiness dancing, you know, and I think he says that because he's trying to bring the opposites together of the emptiness and fullness. And when you really do see and cut through essentially to um, the, the core kind of misperception that we hold about ourselves in the world, there can be a sense of deep spaciousness and emptiness and just um, a letting go of identity that has been there before. But what also can be there is then there's um, 
the movement that arises out of that that didn't come from um, that previous identity that had been more embedded in our psyche. So his formulation of emptiness dancing really resonates with me. And so we might do a little bit of practice with that empty fullness or the spaciousness and the luminosity. Um, I just threw a lot of stuff out there. Does anyone have any reflections? We, we will always delete it out in the, in the final before, you know, in the recorded version. If anybody has any questions or reflections at this point before we get into the practice. Yeah, I just want to say I might have to drop off in the middle, so don't take it personally. Okay, sure. Okay, yeah, thanks. Think, thanks for letting us know. Appreciate that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at the same time, with um, I, I love how I feel like every yoga nidra is a bit of a crapshoot. <laughs> I mean, it's just like you just kind of show up and see what happens. It's like sometimes I know Katie is like, oh, I actually fell asleep the whole time, but something happened. I don't know what it was. And another time, you know, it might be like, hard to focus or just meeting the stuff that's coming up for you that has nothing to do with what we're meditating on, whatever it is. So I, I would just invite that kind of humor and looseness to the practice of just kind of seeing what happens and um, just letting, letting the guidance and the words uh, be like a scaffolding for you and your own inquiry. So so that's how we'll do this. And yeah, so we'll start the practice. And the the thing at the beginning is to get as comfortable as you can where you feel like you can actually be in the same position for a half hour or so, if not a little bit more. And so you can um, turn off your video and um, if you'd like, I mean, not everyone has to. And then um, just find yourself in a supported position where you feel like you can um, have a relaxed body. And so as you're getting settled, perhaps even consider what brought you to this moment. And maybe just take a moment as you're situating yourself to let go of whatever it is that has come before right now and to enter into this practice. So you're kind of, it's like making a commitment to yourself to let go of all of the motion that came before this moment and stepping into this Yoga Nidra practice space with your presence, with your attention. So wherever you are right now, can you find yourself just five or 10% more comfortable? So make a couple adjustments. Maybe you want your heels a little bit wider than hip width distance apart, or you choose to place a pillow underneath your knees, or even elevate your feet a little bit. But just find yourself oh, comfortable, supported to go into a meditation here. Begin by taking a few deep inhales and exhales. So when I say deep, I mean kind of a long, slow inhale and a long, slow exhale. Just notice as you're breathing in and out any thoughts that are present, 
to kind of welcoming your body and mind into your awareness and so noticing thoughts, feeling the breath, noticing any moods or subtle emotional tones that are present. All from that place of this witnessing compassionate awareness as if you need to be no other than you are right now. Just, just exactly as you are is, is perfect in this moment. Now begin to extend the exhalation so the in-breath comes naturally. Just let the out-breath extend a little bit. Inhale comes naturally. Exhale extends. Just doing the work of dropping from the thinking mind down into the body. So maybe even noticing sensation as you're breathing in and out, noticing sensation in your forehead, and anywhere in your head. And then maybe with an exhalation, allow the sensation, energy, and attention to drop down maybe into the heart, to the body. Feeling the habit of energy in the forehead and the thinking mind. And then with each exhalation, just allowing attention and energy to shift down, drop down into the heart. Just now you can even let go of directing attention, directing the breath, and can you feel the simplicity of the body breathing itself? Just in and out. Just relaxing, feeling the whole backside of your body and the surface that supports you. Doing this mixture of the meditation as a practice in relaxation and letting go. Also a practice in just meditative inquiry finding your own balance as you're noticing the breath coming and going, feeling the whole backside of your body, heels, backs of your legs, back, back of your head. Noting your intention for the practice, perhaps simply to follow along, perhaps to work with something specific. And 
and find your senses open, feeling your body as a receptivity to sound, to sight, taste, smell, touch. Feeling this openness and spaciousness in your body as the senses aren't grasping, but rather are receiving. So perhaps there's a relaxation behind your eyes and your inner ears, mouth and nose, hands, feet. Maybe with the exhale, there's more of a letting go. Whatever is an unnecessary tension in your body, scanning your body. Even from the beginning of the practice, feeling these qualities of openness and spaciousness, you may feel a quality of, of emptiness or like a clear space. Noticing when I say those words, what lands as sensation in, in the felt sense of your body. And perhaps simultaneously experiencing the qualities of luminosity, of radiance, of aliveness, vibration. If the phrase emptiness dancing resonates with you, just searching in the body for the felt sense of that. So following the breath in and out or simply noticing as the belly rises and falls natural movement of the breath. And perhaps this quality of spacious emptiness and luminous fullness, perhaps that is a resourced place for you, a place that brings about a quality of well-being, of ease. So we start the practice from a place of resource. The mind may even go very quiet as you're just resting this quality of being. Feeling that all the way through the body as a, as a deep resource that's here for you. It's so essential to, if you are Knowing you can return back to this very simple inquiry, emptiness dancing at any time during the practice, or allow it to be the background for all of the inquiry in this meditation.
perhaps an intention could be just allowing misperception to fall away. So breath coming and going, we'll do a body scan beginning in the jaw and ending in the feet. And as I name a part of the body, simply notice what sensations are present or lack of sensation. Just draw your attention to that part. So we'll begin with the jaw and the mouth, relaxing the tongue, the back of the tongue. Notice if there's any holding or tension in your jaw as it goes up toward your ears. Tension may spontaneously release when it's noticed. So it's not a deep efforting, simply paying attention to the sensation of the jaw, the ears, cheekbones, nose, flow of the breath in and out. So sensing both ears simultaneously. The jaw may release a little bit when you sense both ears at the same time. Simultaneously noticing the flow of the breath in and out the nose or the mouth. Sensing now both eyes simultaneously. And same, just see if there's any tension or holding around both eyes. May it spontaneously release or relax, or perhaps it tightens. There's no agenda here, just following sensation behind the eyes. And letting go of thinking if thoughts come in just welcome them to be here and let them pass through feeling from behind the eyes now all the way through the midline of the brain to the back of the head down to the back of the neck shoulders can you feel all the subtle small muscle tensions and holdings in the back of the neck. If so, what would it be like to release and relax any unnecessary holding of your head away from the surface that supports you? The sensation in both shoulders. And we'll start with the left arm. So with an inhalation, bring attention to the left shoulder. With an exhalation, allow attention to flow down the left arm into the palm of the left hand, noticing any tingling, radiance, spaciousness in the whole left arm and hand. Bringing the inquiry, whether there's a sense of emptiness, fullness, just noticing the different qualities present as you pay attention to the sensation in your left arm, left hand. Do the same thing on the other side. So with an inhale, bring attention to the right shoulder. With an exhale, attention, energy flowing all the way down the right arm to the palm of the right hand. Just notice any tingling, numbness, emptiness, spacious, fullness, whatever's here, radiance. 
right arm, right hand. And as you're sensing the right arm and hand, can you feel in this background quality of awareness, perhaps having the additional quality of a kindness or a compassionate awareness? Inhaling both shoulders and then exhaling both arms, both hands. go of thinking, just feeling the sensation of both arms, both hands. Feeling into the space between the arms and the torso and then bringing attention to the torso. In particular, the breath flowing in and out. So notice the belly is rising with the inhale, falling with the exhale. Maybe the chest is rising and falling. You allow your awareness to be so close with the breath. It's almost indistinguishable, just body breathing in and out. Continue with the inquiry, bringing attention to the left hip with an inhale. Gentle exhalation all the way down the left leg to the sole of the left foot. Breathing in and out, left leg, left foot. Notice here any qualities of emptiness, of radiance. Perhaps it's just a felt sense of energy in the left leg and foot. That's hard to describe, so no need to name it specifically, but really being close to the felt sense of the left leg, left foot. A, a buzzing aliveness or a numbness, whatever's here. And with that same loving awareness, bringing attention to the right hip, inhaling, exhaling all the way down the right leg to the sole of the right foot. Just being so absorbed with your attention in the right leg and foot. Whatever's present, just noticing, being with. You may feel a lot of energy moving. You may feel the, a deep quality of emptiness. Whatever's here, just welcoming it as it is. Inhaling both hips, exhaling both legs, both feet, pure sensation. Feeling the torso, back, belly, chest arms, legs, hands and feet, head and neck. So welcoming your whole body into awareness.
perhaps having a an experience where the witnessing awareness is not separate from just the body, the aliveness of the body, the spaciousness of the body. They kind of melt into each other. So this inquiry feels rich for you. Feel free to stay with the felt sense of the body, the aliveness. Sort of a whole 360 view or experience of this kind of spacious openness, this radiance. Let the words be your words. So whatever feels right to describe the experience of just being. Feel free to remain in that inquiry. And if it feels right, we'll continue into the next part of the meditation where I'll name emotions and their opposites. And as I do so, can you allow, as I say the name of the emotion, simply feel the felt sense of the imprint of that emotion. You may have an image or a memory come sort of non-judgmentally noticing what arises in you is elicited in you as I name an emotion and then its opposite. And I'll name several. Feel free to rest here as this welcoming awareness as I name opposites of emotion. See what's elicited in you. So just noticing the felt sense of embarrassment, being embarrassed. The energetic and somatic quality of that. And then noticing the felt sense of being confident. Any image or memory or body sensation that accompanies the feeling of confidence. And now the feeling of being exhausted, noticing the imprint in the body when you feel exhausted. And the feeling of being vital, having vitality, the felt sense of that in your body. the feeling of being fearless, noticing the felt sense of being fearless, and then the felt sense of being frightened, being frightened. The felt sense of being important, feeling important. And 
And I felt sense of feeling insignificant. We'll do just a few more. The feeling of being lighthearted, lighthearted. And the feeling of being despondent. Just noticing the imprint, any images, the felt sense, no judgment, just allowing whatever comes and goes in your experience as I name these emotions. And the feeling of being trusting, feeling trusting. It's elicited in you as you experience that in your body. And the feeling of being skeptical. Last one, the feeling of being sad. And then the feeling of being cheerful, feeling, just feeling a cheerfulness. Can you feel back into this witnessing awareness as You've experienced these differing opposites of emotion. Feeling the different imprints of the felt sense of each one as it's come and gone. doing an inquiry into what's most essentially true about who you are and who you aren't in this moment, having considered these emotions. Perhaps connecting back with that inquiry and the felt sense of being spacious, empty, and luminous or full. Where the mind just goes quiet. The body experiences are coming and going. There's like a deep ease, a lack of defense. What's it like to rest here in this quality of just being? No need to be a certain way, truly in line with what is who you are most essentially and with what's unfolding in this meditation. There's no correct way to do this. Simply being with your experience as you come upon it. We'll do an opposite practice with the sheath of cognition and beliefs. So I will name opposites of beliefs and simply inquire into the felt sense of how it feels when you believe 
first one and then the other. No judgment, simply notice the, the somatic experience and also any images or memories that arise. We're coming to this really just with curiosity, not needing something to happen in a particular way. So in the spirit of meditation, welcoming each of these beliefs, trying them on and then letting them go. So the belief, I am not lovable. And the belief, I am lovable. The belief, I am weak. Now the belief, I am strong. The belief, it's my fault. It's my fault. And the belief, I did the best I could. The belief, I have to be perfect to be loved. And the belief I can make mistakes and still be loved. The belief I am a disappointment. I am a disappointment. And the belief, I am okay just as I am. Feeling the resonance of the felt sense of each of these beliefs, perhaps some more than others. Can you feel this welcoming awareness? And how these thoughts come and go in that awareness. Each with their own imprint, their own somatic experience. And no need to try to figure out this part of the practice. So we're really coming not from the mind, dropping into the heart and then feeling our way in with these opposites of emotion, opposites of belief. And then if, if it's of interest, feeling down beneath the beliefs, your deepest knowing about who you are, who you aren't. Just notice what comes. What is it that I most deeply know to be true in this moment? And core truth of 
who I am or seeing through a misperception, seeing who I'm not. So we're using the mind in this inquiry, but the answers come straight from the body, straight from the felt experience. So letting go of trying too hard and simply just notice what's in your experience. What do you know most deeply to be true? We'll do the same with the inquiry into emptiness. So if you do invite in the quality of emptiness and whatever that means to you, empty of self, that may be in your fault experience, something like a deep vastness or spaciousness where you kind of can't quite find a central core to your body and mind. So noticing what does emptiness, spaciousness feel like in your body. And then what does fullness, kind of a radiance or luminous quality, some aliveness feel like? Notice any images that come, even internal sounds or colors, feelings, as you're exploring possible then feeling both simultaneously. That in your experience, which is empty, Perhaps the word you might use would be empty of self, but just an emptiness or a spaciousness where the misperceptions have been seen through, core beliefs about who you are. Then also simultaneously this quality of like radiant fullness, this luminous quality shining through that emptiness. In touch with the fullness of self or who you most deeply are. Let go of any language that doesn't resonate and simply inquire into your felt sense of what is most essential if you drop down past the layers of thought, belief, emotion, body, breath, what's left? So the inquiry in the last part of the practice is to hang out with this experience, empty fullness, emptiness, dancing, where it's like the misperceptions are falling away and just clear seeing and perceiving of what's essential is present.
is the most present thing in the foreground. Whatever that is for you. the breath comes and goes, can you rest in whatever qualities are present in your experience? If there's a feeling like you can't find yourself anywhere, no problem. There's a feeling that you're only finding yourself everywhere, no problem. As we move toward closing the practice, bringing attention to the heart, is there a feeling of, of joy or of deep well-being or equanimity that might be present when you're making contact with what's essential? Sometimes a joy can kind of erupt at the heart. a deep equanimity that almost can bring like a smile to your face. Perhaps picturing yourself going through your evening, whatever it is that you'll be doing and having this background feeling or foreground feeling of emptiness dancing, of feeling yourself kind of carried into the evening, into bed, into sleep, and waking up feeling refreshed. And before we close, just noticing, is there anything that wants to be acknowledged in this moment? Anything at all, just seeing if anything your psyche delivers you, any message that feels important to be seen, to be recognized, acknowledged. And then when it feels comfortable, slowly begin to reorient. So if you're in a deep exploration or fall, uh, you've fallen asleep, then just remain wherever you are. But if you would like to begin to come back, then you can slowly move your fingers, maybe bringing your hands into fists and then releasing them, moving your toes and feet, eventually bringing your knees in toward your chest and rolling off to one side. Really let yourself take your time as you come back and perhaps with a moment of gratitude to yourself for coming and for being present for the meditation.
So we'll stop the recording here and then